let's have a little scrap busting session. Hello and welcome to the treasured page. I'm Melanie and this is our quiet crafting space. And I've been sitting here for the last few weeks surrounded by all these papers and things and I've just managed to untangle them, sort things out so to the left, to the right, it's starting to make more sense. So I just thought I'm going to launch in to see what I've got on the desk and what I can make. So I'm just going to have a look at all the things and see if I can make anything here. So I've had this atlas page here for the last week and I am still not <laughs> I'm still not any closer to using it up. So let's just do something about this right now. Okay guys, so I think I will have a Marianne North story while I'm just pottering here. And uh, I think we could just have a listen to the next part of that so that we're catching up there. Last time Marianne was in England, she'd just come home, she's having a look at her gallery and she hadn't done too well with the last travelling adventure, she'd started to feel quite unwell. So against everybody's judgement, Marianne still wants to go back to South America because there's two trees in particular in this region actually looking at it. She's missing two particular trees that there is really very little documented about and she's absolutely desperate to sort of finish this collection, moving heaven and earth to go and get what she needs. So off she goes to South America and we will listen to the next part of that story while I try and make some sense of my scraps on the table. There was one more journey to be undertaken. Much against the advice of her family and friends, Marianne set off in August 1884 for Chile, South America determined to paint both Oracara Oracana, the monkey puzzle tree, and the great blue Puya alpestris. In Chile, tiresomely, people told her that there were no specimens of the Puya in flower. Others declared it simply did not exist. But with her unusual determination, however, Marianne soon located specimens and a man in San Diego was bribed to bring her one. It was a poor example, almost as wretched as the one she had tried to draw in the cactus house at Kew Gardens in London, but it was still exciting. She decided that an expedition must be made with a guide and a horse to its native habitat in the Cordilius Mountains. At times, in the mountains, when it became too steep, they had to dismount and proceed on foot through thick clouds. Nothing could be seen, but Marianne would not give up. Eventually, the mists cleared and she was rewarded with the sight of a great group of noble flowers, standing like ghosts at first and then coming out with their full beauty of colour and form in every stage of growth, while beyond them glittered a snow peak far away. There was blue sky overhead too, it was yet another new world of wonders. There were the same difficulties in trying to find the monkey puzzle tree. People said the forests were difficult to reach, that they were dangerous, that she might be carried off by Indians or even eaten by pumas. Others declared the trees had been chopped down and used for railway sleepers. However... A two-hour rail journey, she had been given a free pass on all railways by the government of Chile, took her to Angol, and a further four-and-a-half-hour ride with an Irishman who owned the forest brought her within sight of her goal. The trees, they looked like 
pins loosely stuck into a pincushion as they stood out black against the sunset sky. And soon Marianne was settling down to paint her latest portrait. Sadly, by the end of her visit to Chile, Marianne was feeling wretched and ill. Her nerves were following me everywhere. In Lima, she consulted an old German doctor who gave her bromide, which had as much effect as toast and water, she wrote in her journal. And Marianne decided to return home via Jamaica where she rested with old friends and was prescribed yet more useless bromide. I'm now going to read part of the chapter which deals with Marianne's last years. Marianne spent another year after her return from Chile, adding new pictures to the gallery and renumbering the paintings so that all the countries were together and made sense. She was staying in London in Victoria Street, in the house that she had been left by her father. It had 89 steps to climb to the front door. But her strength had gone. She was afflicted by rheumatism. And she no longer had the desire to visit the once longed for tropics. She was determined to find a quiet country place with a garden where she could end her days far from the maddening crowd of callers and lawn tennis. In the summer of 1886 Marianne found the exact place a charming old stone house with a garden fields and an orchard situated in Alderley a remote village hidden in the folds of the Cotswolds in Gloucestershire. There she set about making the most perfect garden in England. OK, I've just used a little ideology uh, big chat from Tim Holtz and I found the word destination there. I think that's perfect and it's going to go in the Marion North journal. Uh, that was for the last leg of her journey to Chile and this could have been a passport or a document holder but we will fill that with something else that involves scrap busting so that will be the next thing that I do and then we've got a little pocket here as well and we'll just decorate that up next time so those are two things that have been made out of literally all the rubbish that has been in the tray. And this was one of the unused prompt cards from De Femeremba uh, as designed by Louise Heinzel. So that is, um, that's wonderful to be able to incorporate that back into the project and just sort of on our penultimate video because we've got one more story to go to tie up the book so we can say we've read a book this year <laughs> and um, and then you know the journal will be done so we can have a look at all of the things in the journal and here we are that's just the back and it, the back has been dictated by whatever scraps there were but there's enough interest going on there for that to be fun and then that is the front so there we go that is the a little booklet journal with a little pocket and that's the make today. Mm -hmm. uh, maybe that could come and live in here. For the time being. And then I want to fill that with something else. But yeah, there's... Oh, perhaps it could come. There we go. Perhaps that could come and live behind that belly band there for the time being. And we'll put this little neat idea. This is a journaling card. And I think that should come and live in there. Perfect. Perfect. Ah, there we go. That is just an epic adventure. Yeah, I've got to I've got some more I've got a couple of tabs to add on and I've got that. So that was Tenerife and Singapore need to come on there. Is that another one? Oh, and Brazil, yes. I had to take some off because they were they were interfering with the ephemera, so they are going to be repositioned elsewhere. 
There we go, I think we're nearly there. We've just got one more story just to tie that off and that will be back to England and we'll just put a few more ephemera bits in there if we can possibly squeeze it in and then, um, yeah, I need to I need to sort of squash that under some books and just get that squashed down as much as it possibly can and then we'll have some sort of closure. This is the, probably the chunkiest one I've ever done but this was a, an ephemera holder and it was for the purpose of having the ideas. So if I want to make an official uh, Marian North journal now for the purpose of gifting, giving away or keeping or having it all in the right order then I can of course uh, use some ideas and inspiration from this now to be able to go and make that and that's the whole idea of all of this is just so that we've got ideas if you build up an ideas journal you can you can just go into that whenever you need to and those ideas will always be there for you just put that there for the time being and then yeah I just put those on just glue those on I hope that that's shown how simple it can be just using up a few scraps and then creating a book cover and then you could just sew some pages into that and it's a mini booklet isn't it or it's um, you know another belly a couple of belly bands something in there that could just be a writing space it doesn't even need to have anything else done to it a bit of washi tape up the side have a look at all the scraps and things that you've got and just see if you could make something like that. There we go, so don't overcomplicate things, just look at what you've got and have a go. If you're new to the channel, do have a look at the playlist for the Marianne North Journal that is was set out for Defemarimba. You will be able to have a look at the playlist and watch all the videos in order and hear all the stories and uh, really you'll have an audio book. One more chapter to go and that will be based in England where Marianne spends the last years of her life in Gloucestershire. And do you know who also was born in Gloucestershire? Well, it was Dr Burnell. So there we go, that is the make for today. I hope you found fun and value there. Give me a thumbs up, have a look at more of my videos if you're finding that these are easy to follow. Okay guys, so I hope you have fun in your quiet crafting spaces and above everything else, just slow down and make crafting time for you. Bye bye now. Mm -hmm.